Hey guys, welcome to this week's hardware video. The Olivetti M300-02. I picked this up recently from eBay. This was a Spurs of Repairs auction. I got it on a best offer though for £30. Sold as seen and uh, does not power up. Or, well, that's what it said in the listing anyway. There's nothing wrong with the bloody thing. So, instead of what was supposed to be a repair video, I think today we'll just give you a wee bit of a tour around the machine and uh, we'll have a look at what possibilities we have for upgrading it. On the front of the machine here, we have our power button that you just seen works. It has this weird uh, thing that slides over here and when that is in position, can't really, well if you push hard it will turn off, but I don't see the point in this whatsoever. The only thing I can think is maybe when this is turned on, this is supposed to snap across by itself. I don't know, we'll have a better look when we get inside. We have a five and a quarter inch drive bay here. So there's an option on this machine from new to either have the three and a half inch or a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. We may look at putting a five and a quarter inch floppy in here or more likely I'll try and put a CD drive in here. Just to make it a bit easier for transferring uh, software onto the machine. Nothing of any consequence on the side. Around the back then with the power supply. And you've got a pass through for your monitor. PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse. You have serial and parallel ports. VGA output, and this machine does VGA, which is pretty cool. There's a wee lock here which locks the case closed. Not much to see on this side. There's two screws here, but they're not attached to the case or anything, so we'll have a closer look at those inside. And that's about it. Right. Let's get it open. Tool this enter anybody. You got a nice lever here. And that's it. That cracks the case open. And then you just pull. That doesn't look right. There's a crack in that there too. Put a bit of glue on that. Yeah, I think that's supposed to sit in there. Yeah, nice wee door which opens up to show you the motherboard. So here's our onboard memory. There's two megabytes of onboard memory, which you can see they're soldered on. And then we have two SIMs in here. There is two ISA slots in here, 16 bit ones at that. I can't see this very well at the minute, but I'll turn it down later and you'll be able to see better. That's the 386 processor and it's an AMD processor and this one not Intel that's a socket I would assume for the 387 co-processor that's nice to see a lithium battery and it's a CR2450 um, I would assume that's probably dead so we'll have to look at replacing that but it's nice it's not one of those barrel batteries that would leak all over the place There's a PC speaker down in there. Our floppy drive, which as you can see is like some sort of slimline thing. There's our hard drive. A Connor drive. Not sure what size it is, doesn't say on it here. We'll have a better look when we power the machine on. There's this weird uh, mechanism here for the, the power button. I don't know. I'm not overly fussed about it to be honest because I mean the machine turns off and on with this so we're not too worried about the rest of it. There's a bit of plastic that just fell out of the case. No oh dear. Keep that to the side. There's another bit of plastic that fell out. We'll keep them to the side for now in case we can figure out where they're meant to be. 
In the spur drive bay here, you can see we have a spur Molex connector and a connector on the floppy ribbon cable here for your five and a quarter inch floppy disk. The IDE on it only has the one connector for the hard drive. I would imagine the IDE uh, controller in here, or probably more the BIOS in here, will not support the CD drive, but we have options there. We can install a sound card that will support an uh, IDE drive or CD, so that's probably the way we're going to go because the only sound this machine has anyway is PC speaker. But I want to put something a little more uh, or a little less primitive in here for games. Right, let's get it back together quickly and uh, we'll power it on. Right, we'll get the monitor on. Let's power the machine on. Do we get a video signal? Yep, looking good. Four megabytes total memory. So those two sims that we've seen in there must be one megabyte each. And we're booting into Windows. Excellent. Right, here we are in Windows then. We'll have a quick look in File Manager. So there's our C drive, and you can see down here, total capacity is 41,500 kilobytes. So this is one of the 40 megabyte hard drives we have in here. Let's see what's on the drive though. A couple of games by the looks of it. Arcade, Asteroid, Tempest, C serve. I have to have a guess, say that's an old copy serve. There's our DOS folder. Frustrate, don't know, probably a game. Gemma, no idea. Humans, no, that's a game from my Amiga days. In Dark, not sure. Lemmings, well, we all know what that is. Mouse, mouse drivers, presumably. MS Works, remember using that back in the day for schoolwork and whatnot. PCG, Cyclones. No idea, presumably another game of some sort. Pack, nothing in there. Sky, looks like it was a game at one point, there's nothing else in here though. Possibly beneath the steel sky. Would have been cool if I had had that on. Oh well. Something from Virgin Interactive I would assume. Scrabble, yeah. There's our Windows folder. What's this, Win... Wintel MM? No idea. Possibly a copy of Lemmings or something. Who knows? WP51. No idea. WP. Word perfect. That's what it is. And Zool. Very good. Let's try a bit of Lemmings. VGA graphics, yes please. This is a high performance PC, didn't you know? Axel, F1, one player game. Maybe not that high performance, eh? <laughs> I think I've killed it. Now we are trying to run that under Windows and it is a DOS game, so maybe there's something going on there. Who knows? Right, let's just reset the machine and do something a bit more worthwhile. I think we should test that floppy drive. I've got a blank disk here. Right, let's try the disk drive. 
Loden and Jacqueline seems to work okay. Right. All we'll do, we'll try and format the drive. Create a bootable, bootable uh, disk. Can we access it? Mm, making strange noises. Make a system disk. Let me check that that disk is not right protected. No, it's not. Oh well. Possibly faulty disk drive. And if that is the case, this could be a problem because that is like a slimline thing. Right, that's something to do. We'll tear this down, we'll take the disk drive out and we'll see what is going on. In fact, just looking at the disk, You probably won't be able to see this on camera. There, see there, look. There's loads of scrapes on the surface of the disc. So possibly the heads in here are away. And they're damaging the surface of the disc. It certainly looks like they've damaged the surface of this one. But we'll take it down, we'll lubricate the rails, we'll try and clean it, put it back together, and fingers crossed that will work. There's a lot of dirt in there actually. Right, let's do that. Okay, so floppy drive. So, like when we uh, give the Commodore 64 drive a bit of a service, we're just gonna go in here first and try and get some of this dust. I don't suspect the dust is what's causing the problems though. don't really want to have to take apart this mechanism any more than this so you could uh, take this off get this out and uh, get the rest of it a bit of a clean but I'm a little reluctant to to be honest just because I think the drive is probably it's just hot as day but look we'll give it a clean anyway so the heads like before, you just want to get a wee bit of your IPA. And a cotton bud. And you just want to go over the heads. Give them a nice clean. Okay, the other thing we're going to do then is just lubricate the rails a little bit. You can see them in here. Just in, in there, underneath the, the read right head. That's one of them. In fact, there's quite a bit of dirt in there still. Let me see if I can just use this cotton bud that has a wee bit of IPA on it. Look at that there. Dirty, dirty. I mean, one of the other reasons that this drive might not be working is the motor. You know, the motor might be spinning at the right rate. And possibly capacitors or something. What we'll do here in a minute is we'll power this on with the lid off. Just see what it's doing. Right, so the lithium. You just want to put a little bit of it here underneath. That'll do. And on the worm drive up here, we'll stick a wee bit on the worm drive as well. Too much. There's a cotton bud. Right, unlike in the C64 drive, you can't really force that, so don't be trying to. Right, let's give it a test with the lid off. Okay, so we've got the floppy drive connected up again. We're back in Windows. So we will uh, stick in this disk. This is the one that has the scratches on the surface of it. We'll just try it again first. 
before we do anything else. I don't want to risk damaging another another disc. Right, so let's select the A drive. What's happening? Disc is spinning away there. Can't see it on the bottom, just unfortunately. Let's try and do a format again. Right, I will not initialize the disc. So, we'll try one more disc. This is a good, and then I've tested this disc on my uh, Windows 98 laptop, and this disc is fine. Let's try it for about it. No, same problem. Cannot format disk. So yeah, unfortunately it looks like the floppy drive is dead. There's not much more I can think of doing with this, to be honest. I could try to replace those two caps. Possible. Uh, it's another possibility is that the heads are out of alignment. That's a wee bit beyond me, though, unfortunately. So, if anyone has any ideas about what is going wrong here or what's went wrong with this, I would uh, welcome any suggestions in the comment section below about how we may uh, repair this disk drive. Well, it's a shame we couldn't fix the disk drive. I'll order up those two caps anyway, and we'll, we'll replace them anyway. Never know, that might fix it. We'll just put it back together again for now anyway. Alright, there's the floppy drive back in place. I want to have a quick go at removing the main board, just so we can give it a good clean and get a better look at it. So, let me see. Hard to... Maybe we can remove that, first of all. The power connector to it. I don't see any screws in through that uh, riser there. There's one screw in the bottom here, so we'll take this out. Held on by all these. See all these things? They all have to come out. We'll just see if our pointy nose pliers will grab it. Yeah. Probably should take these off first before taking that screw out. Alright, this is going to take a while. Back in a minute. Right, so it turns out we only needed to remove that one. That was holding it on the VGA connector. This one down here. And here's the wee motherboard. So there's our 386 AMD processor. That's our video chip, BIOS. Not 100% sure what these are. There's our uh, onboard, two megabytes. And then these are one megabytes each. And if you remember, that bit of plastic that fell out. Unfortunately, it broke off here. That's what happens when plastic gets old. You can see that there, you know, you see you need to bend those back to get the those RAM modules out. And I'm actually worried that if I bend that, that'll snap. It just doesn't feel like it wants to be flexible. So we'll not take the RAM modules out for now anyway. Seems to be pretty well in there, even though that bit is broke off, so. We'll probably just have to leave well enough alone. Could possibly try and glue that back on.
Yeah. Well, if we get our upgraded ROM, we'll be taking those out, and then at that point, I'll try and fix this. But for now, just leave well enough alone. That's the socket there for the 387. Not fitted, and to be honest, I don't really see the point in fitting it. This is labelled as a feature connector. So something to do with the video chip. Uh, two empty sockets here. Not 100% sure what for though. Looks like there was an option to have another port on here of some shape form or another. But not fitted and there's a couple of chips missing. There's our IDE and our floppy drive connectors. Two ISA slots, so we're going to get a sound card and a network card for those. And our battery. I wonder if there's any life in the battery. The multimeter. Let's see. Oh, there we are. Oh, two point something bullet. Can't get onto this very well. There we are. 2.83 volts in the battery. It's a three volt battery, so... That's actually not bad, considering the age of it. I'll have to try and set the set the time on the clock to see if it will remember it. So yeah, that's it. Not a lot else to see today. If anyone has any ideas how I can fix a floppy drive, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'll order up those two capacitors anyway, they're only a couple of pounds, so we'll get those and replace them and see if that will help, but to be honest I'm not, I'm not particularly hopeful about it. We'll get the two expansion cards ordered up. I'll have a look at the memory, see how much it costs, if we'll do that. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, give a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. Uh, please consider subscribing and any and all comments are welcome as always. Until next time guys.